It's time for Q&A. I could explain everything. Tim, I'm trying to corrupt. I think this might help us, George. Hey, he hello, this is uh, Dave's Emporium of Enthusiasm. How can I help Ooh. you? Oh, Dave's, you're just the person we need. We're really flagging. Um, we're in hour 10 of our Alphathon. Oh my, have you raised a lot of money for the children? Uh, some money for snacks. For the, for the man-children that are watching it right now. <laughs> yeah, man-children. Oh, oh, well, that's, that, that's good. I, I, um, I always love the Labor Day telethon growing <laughs> up. Um, but it, 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 let me, as, as a writer who worked on the show, let me see if I can imbue you with the same energy and enthusiasm with which we greeted each episode you say you're flagging you say you're tired but do you know how long it took to write each episode i don't eight thousand hours eight thousand wow hours wow I'm rounding up from 10 or 12 okay but but let's go with eight thousand um but still look you know how long it took to produce it it took a week to shoot the episode Weeks more to edit and score the episode. Days and weeks of toil and talent. Guys, you can do this. You have that talent and you have that toil. I've seen you do it. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for you. Do it for love. Do it for art. But most of all, do it for Melmac. Yes! Do this. We, we can do this. I'm we recharged. This. I, I'm, I'm renewed George? in my task. I will do it for the old Alpha. <laughs> I'm doing it for Mel Mac. And, and by the way, if you don't, I'm shoving this kitten right into his mouth. No, right don't do that. Don't do okay, that. No, I, I, yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll resist the urge. Uh, uh, but, yeah, that... that David, I, I can't. Yeah, we're George just uh, embarking in the caffeine journey now. Um, what'd you get? Oh, some root beer. Unfortunately, caffeine free, oh, but caffeine I meant well. Free. Okay. Um, yeah, I just grabbed a nice tea. We're doing okay. We're in a part two Jake based episode right now, a two parter. Ah. Uh, you remember? Uh, which, you, re you remember Jake? The. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. I, I, um, Didn't you write a Jake episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Standing in the Shadows of Love. It was a Cyrano de Bergerac yes. episode. And, and um, Alf was coaching Jake uh, uh, to to woo this young girl he, he had a crush on. And and uh, I remember the joy in writing uh, Alf's Mia. And, and Alf was speaking in his head to Rhonda. Right. You know, and, and falling in love, with, you know. So uh, uh, at some point he says, uh, uh, he prompts Jake to say, my, you, you know, you make, your, my, you make my stomach queasy when you're near. He says, queasy? Is something wrong with your stomach? And, well, I, I actually, Al says, I actually have three stomachs. He whispers to Jake, I actually have three stomachs. <laughs> I have three stomachs. You have three stomachs? As a yes. One stomach just going up. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. One stomach to digest mere food. What? I'm not doing an Alf's loud voice. <laughs> Jake says, one stomach to digest mere food. One stomach to feel butterflies when you're near. And one more leading nowhere, just for show. <laughs> that's a good line. That's a good line. Classic, classic. That's, a, yeah. that's season three, right? We're, we're... Yeah, season three, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. That'll be the next yeah. Alphathon. That's good. That's it was any way to get a, a Fiddler on the Roof reference into a sitcom. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm there. I feel like Elf Tales was a lot of that, too. You got to do some, some highbrow uh, pop culture literary references there with the classic children's tales in Elf's universe. Yes, yeah. It, it, we were aiming... Uh, we, we were firing comedy buckshot. We were, <laughs> we were, aiming, we were aiming at... Every, and, I, and I don't mean that, that we weren't, like, you know targeting uh, uh, the script with, with great, you know, intensity, we were 
entertaining kids, we were entertaining adults, we were entertaining whoever was watching the show, um, and we were writing it for ourselves. And mm-hmm. We wanted to make ourselves laugh, and you know, our touchstone for those were uh, the Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoons and Warner Brothers cartoons, and how they never played, you know, to the youngest of the young, although right. the youngest of the young could, could appreciate the pretty colors. Yes. Right they so. didn't talk down to it, yeah. Um, and uh, we watched, by the way, on a Saturday Morning Cartoons episode with David, we watched um, Rapunzel, I believe, the rap <laughs> the, the rap episode of Rapunzel. Um, and those raps still get stuck in my head, so, yeah. Wow, uh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> no, you should be very proud. Uh, well, then I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for, 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 for that. Uh, do I get any um, ass cap if it's playing in your head? Do I get my, you, my... Yeah, you do. They'll uh, they they'll work out the royalties. You've got a, you've got an ass cap head, right? Your, your head is registered Ab- with a- ass cap. Absolutely, it just automatically happens. Yeah, you check for Excellent. check for thirteen cents will arrive very Excellent. soon. Actually, co- it you know really costs you nothing. I just you know I need to know that I'm getting uh, yeah it. thirteen thirteen cents is right. Yep. So you do know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, no, my head's accounting for all this. And we, hey, we, David, we printed off Alphathon. Um, George's girlfriend made uh, the official Alphathon stickers, which I will send you in the mail when we wrap up, uh, I guess, in the wee hours tonight. We'll see how it goes. Oh, cool. And, yeah. Yeah, and it's an official bootleg item, as I'd yes. like to say. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward uh, to enjoying it or seeing how much I can get for it on eBay, uh, and you'll be the one buying it, so it's a <laughs> So, no, no, no. I, 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 it will, it will join uh, my beloved Alphabilia. Yes, you do have a good uh, collection going. Some, I'm jealous of a lot of your memorabilia, Alphabilia. Especially that writing, uh, the scripts that you've written. That's a great piece of That's memorabilia nice, you have. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to send you a couple of copies. I, I don't think I can get into legal trouble for that. Uh-huh. Uh, you, know, you know what? I'll say, I'm, I'm sending it to you as a sample so you could see if you would want to hire me in the future should you be producing a sitcom. The Elf I'll reboot. Say that, yeah. And then it's professional. I'm not just giving you copies of scripts you can sell on eBay. Uh, Good. We found the uh, loophole. And, yeah. And you can't, you know, I don't think anybody's selling them on eBay. But, uh, <laughs> no, I'd love, I'd love for you to have it because you are, you are uh, uh, truly the, the shrine keeper. Oh, uh, thank you so much. That means so much. You know, I, I... I I envy your collection <laughs> and your joy. You know, the thing, thing about working on a TV show is it's a combination of joy and exhaustion. I mean, right. it's tiring watching them, but, um, you know, it's, it's like, wow. And then you start thinking about how hard you worked on the show, how many times you did go home to go to sleep working on that show. You know, I don't know that we, that, that we did many overnights with Alf or a lot of them, but there were late nights. There were a lot of late nights. So it's it's uh, it come it, it it comes back to me, I, you know. It's, it's why, yeah. That's why they pay you, you know, yes. decent money, not you know, just to keep you there. Did you ever? To, to, you know, you need some sort of motivation besides cold Chinese food and diet coke to stay up all night. Did you ever have to nap in the puppeteer's trench, uh, because that was the most comfortable or darkest place in the studio? <laughs> When you stayed I didn't, over. Have to, I didn't have to nap there. <laughs> right, but you chose uh, to. But having passed out there, I had to wake up there. Mm. Um, That's Nick's dream, actually. <laughs> wake up in the old elf <laughs> puppet trench? Oh, man. No, I, 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 I didn't. Uh, that, that area was really sacrosanct. I, I mean, it, it, uh, I mean I, I'm sure I visited it, but it, it was like a holy, it was like holy ground, you know? This is... This is where this is where it all comes to life, and, and this is where the magic happens. And, and I, I wanted to believe Alf was real, so I didn't. <laughs> you know, you did, I, yeah. I, I spent the, the first half season. I had no idea who Paul Fusco was. Is it, this guy's walking around. He sounds a lot like Alf. I don't know what is he the stand-in. And then I, he's a pit boy. Well, you just revealed uh, that to George. He didn't know. So uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, David, happy 35th anniversary of ALF. I hope you're celebrating. Uh, how are you celebrating? Well, um, my cat just leapt off my lap as soon as you said, how are you celebrating? Okay. As though, All right. As he, he understood that. Um, you're licking your chops. Uh, 
I, I, I'm so I'm actually celebrating by working on something new. Oh. Um, you know, which not directly inspired by Alf, but uh, you know, it's, it's having my, a career like mine, it's like you did that thing and you did that thing, and then you wrote an opera. I don't understand. Yeah. Well, I don't either. Um, so I'm. I've, I've been working on a, a, a musical play uh, today. And, uh, uh, and and peeking in at your at your uh, uh, alpha. Of course. Well, we appreciate that. And if you want to listen to some of your your uh, non musical based music, you actually wrote a wonderful Alf song about Melmac on our uh, episode of Willie's Garage that you appeared on. Oh yeah, that was that was that I, was fun. I, I want to go back I, to Melmac on ukulele, right? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I want to go back. Want to go back. Well, Go back to Melmac, yes. I still think but, about that one as well. Well, that, that yeah, that, that's, I apologize less for that. It's, it's not so bad to have running around your head. No, no. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to write, and I, I just <laughs> I just found the lyrics uh, uh, the other day sitting on the table where I left them. You <laughs> see how much I clean off that <laughs> table. Um, and and uh, I, I thought to myself again, wow, yeah, Alf should really do an album, Paul Fusco. I, you know, we got to make this happen. Make make the Broadway musical happen. I think this is the next project. Once you well, finish Alf your the, musical, then we. Boy, Alf the musical. I didn't. I wasn't even thinking that. That. that, that <laughs> I mean, opera. it's the next logical step. Yes. Okay. I'm. I'm going to shift gears. <laughs> Mine was kind of a, a modern yeah. urban oh. ghost story. Uh, uh, but I'm going to shift gears and make it an Alf musical or an Alf opera. Okay. Uh, uh, if, if I can. But seriously, I, yeah. you know, writing that song, I, I, I thought if Paul Fusco wanted to do it, an album of Alfian songs yes. is a wonderful thing. You know, it, it, well, I hope he's watching because it's three hours earlier in Los Angeles. It's only 512 in Los Angeles, so maybe he and Linda are watching right now are hearing this and the juices are flowing. They're getting some ideas and maybe this, maybe tonight's the night that's the catalyst for that to happen. Oh, I, I hope so. I, and and uh, you're reminding me that I said last time I wanted to reach out to him. Yeah. Uh, because I, I know other writers from the show who are in touch with him. Um, no reason I'm not. It's just they are. And I think he's on the East Coast now. If Is I'm he? Not oh, okay. Um, All I, right. I, I, I'm sure. I mean, now it doesn't matter which coast you're on. Back then, uh, you lived in LA or you lived in New York. Right. Now, you live wherever your cell phone area code is. It's true. And uh, nobody has to know where you are, <laughs> certainly during the pandemic. Yes, that so. is true. Um, well, we have about, what do we have left, George? About eight episodes? Six and a half? Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah, tune in for as much as you like. I don't want to keep you from your musical writing, but hopefully inspiration has struck and uh, this is renewed. Uh, somebody just said that um, NECA is releasing an articulated uh, elf action figure for the 35th anniversary. So that's an exciting oh. thing coming out. There's a lot of elf news coming out today. So we appreciate Yeah, we appreciate you calling in, Dave. It's always good to hear from you. 35 years. 35. I, I've 35 just 35 years. I've been married for 35 years. And I got No, it wasn't during well yeah, so we're as old as Alf. We weren't there in the first season. That's why. Yeah. We, yeah, I got married during a different show. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> oh, right. That's how, that's how I remember major events. What show was I working on at the time? What show did you get married to? Uh, well, it, there was a show. <laughs> it ran very briefly. We shot it in New York. It was the Ellen Burstyn show. Yeah, I like and Ellen Burstyn. Ellen Burstyn, but it was a half-hour comedy, and it starred... Ellen Burstyn as a, a teacher, a writing teacher, I believe. Her mother played by Elaine Stritch. Oh, Broadway her, legend. You know, absolutely. And I got to write some songs for her because they didn't want to pay for real songs. So <laughs> I wrote I wrote what they considered to be fake songs, but were real songs. I promise. Uh -huh. If Elaine Stritch sang it, it's it, 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 it's a real song. It counts. Yeah. You know, and... And uh, also, uh, uh, another singer on the show playing Ellen's daughter was a young uh, uh, newcomer named uh, Megan Mullally. Really? Yep. So this is all on the Ellen Burstyn show? Yeah, and we shot it in New York. I did uh, audience warm-up with 
the, my former partner Roger, um, and wrote episodes. And that that was that was a show we spent days not sleeping working on. That was a show that kept us in the office. People were developing skin conditions. <laughs> hey, we're really... hey, we're getting there today. We've been sitting in these same chairs since uh, 10 a.m. So we're well. Yeah. You know, the only difference is you're you're not getting paid. What we're getting paid, but, <laughs> but it was it Thanks was for and, reminding. And, and it was it was um, it was really it was in the, the ideal spot where you want a new show to be. It it the lead into the show was uh, Life with Lucy, the final Lucille Ball. Oh, where she was disturbingly which, old. Which was so difficult to watch. Yeah. And, and with, with all respect to Lucille Ball right. and Gail Gordon, uh, you know, the brilliance is, is endless, but it wasn't the best lead in. And it <laughs> premiered, we, I was on my honeymoon when the, when the Ellen Burstyn show premiered. We were in Hawaii, my wife and I. So um, that's, I got married during that. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. And then on to <laughs> Alf. And. Uh, the- yeah, well, Right. Yeah. Alpha, uh, you know, I didn't get married again, but the, you know. Right. I, I had an anxiety attack during Alpha. It was really, uh, and and I quit smoking as a result. <laughs> so there's that. That's. Yeah, I remember that. My wife took me to the hospital. I thought it was a heart attack, and I just said, um, okay, just, "I'm not gonna. Don't let me die, and I won't have another cigarette." And I kept my promise. So. Whoa. Well, let's all yeah, celebrate so. that. A toast to your. You not smoking anymore, and yeah. uh, and and turning around your health and your anxiety that Elf that's, brought upon. That's right. That's right. This is anxiety can be your friend if if you use it correctly as as motivation to stop killing yourself. Okay. So, you know that's that's that's. Uh, T- take uh, home uh, that uh, lesson. Like, yeah. Take yeah. home that lesson, if nothing else, from today's Alphathon. All right, David, we got an episode uh, that is uh, still running as we speak. It's the dramatic conclusion of a, a robbery gone wrong in the Akmonix house. So we got to see how uh, this resolves. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The, the Akmonix house, is, strange things went on there uh, <laughs> when people weren't looking. So uh, keep your eye on them. Okay. Uh, anyway, enjoy. Uh, keep at it. And remember, just remember you're doing this. From Melmac. We're doing it from Melmac, George. Stay awake. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, you, don't, you don't want to end up a pile of space debris like Melmac. <laughs> hmm. Is your um, wife available to run George to the hospital in case things don't go uh, well later tonight? <laughs> um, honey, can you run George to the hospital if things don't go well later tonight? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that you're leaving me after 35 oh, years. Oh, no, no. That's I, I driving me to the hospital, put it uh, <laughs> it's over the top. You That's... don't have to take George to the hospital. We'll, we'll call an Uber. Don't worry. Okay. Ooh. All right, honey, thank you. Uber it is. David Stephen Cohen, everybody. Thanks, thank David. You. Have fun, guys. What a treat. Thank you. Oh, thank my you. God. Wow. Writer extraordinaire. Creator, Raconteur. Co-creator of Elf Tales, storyteller, David Stephen Cohen. That was that was a treat. He's our link. He's Willie's Garage's link to Alf in a way that, you know, no other Alf recap show that I'm aware of uh, has. I don't see Elf TV talking to David. 